everybody, it's International Water Day, and I have the pleasure of being with two water luminaries that are doing incredible things with water and affecting great changes with agriculture. So we have today John Paul Martin. He's the COO of Uptera, a very innovative, super organic program for, for agriculture. And down below, we have Reza Gibson. And he is an otherworldly scientist that, that is able to channel really advanced scientific information and put it all together in a way that is enhancing water. Mm. Why don't you guys tell me a little bit about how did you get interested in water to start with? I'm going to let John Paul Martin lead off on this. All right. Um, so, I mean, as long as I can remember, I have always been either in, around, or on top of water, whether that was one of the first memories I have of swimming in Lake Tahoe as a kid, or my dad teaching me how to ice skate, or skiing, or snowboarding, or surfing, or wakeboarding. I've always really loved water. Mm -hmm. And when I was maybe in elementary school, starting, yeah, middle school, I thought I was going to be a marine biologist. I absolutely loved the oceans and was fascinated by all the life that lived there and the idea of living somewhere tropical and just getting to study that and live on a beach all day which seemed like a really good idea at the time. <laughs> um, and it really wasn't until my late 20s when I started to do more interpersonal work and spiritual development where I really reconnected with the earth and the water in a very profound way and realized that one of my main missions on this earth in this body in this life is as a water protector and i really view the work that we're doing at uptera as a, as really the embodiment of that mission oh that's beautiful so beautiful okay yes. what about you reza for me my first connection you guys with water was in my mother's womb portal <laughs> which then birthed me out into the arms of mother earth as, and as far as I can remember as well, John Paul, I loved the ocean and wanted to be a marine biologist myself. And I am a Pisces, so which is a water sign. So all things water have a profound effect in my life. You know, so as I literally, as far as I can remember, water has been in my life. And awesome. uh, it just has so many things to teach us, right? It has so many secrets and uh, about consciousness and technology and about ourselves and all these things. So it's just really quite a fascinating journey uh, for me. And I'm just honored and blessed to be here to share. Wonderful. Well, tell us a little bit about the mission of Uptera and what you guys are doing there. Yeah, so the, the earth is covered in 71% water, right? And 96% of that water is the oceans, which makes up about three and a half, four percent of the water being fresh water. Mm -hmm. And scientists say only a percent and a half of that is usable and drinkable, right? And so our mission, and we think it's very feasible, is to structure the world's water. And we're starting with ag first. Ah. So that's the big mission we got. <laughs> And, and how are you doing that? So what, so you've, you've got a series of technologies that you're applying to water and that water that's being used to water plants and fields and small greenhouse grows. Tell us what you're doing to the water and how is this yes, tech well, working? Excellent question. So uh, John Paul will probably share some of the stats and some of the things okay. that we're doing with trial partners. But just to touch on that a little, this is where we believe that using resonant principles and technology that's based on like compression and rarefaction in this electric universe, we can have this profound effect on the energetics and the potential use of water in new ways. And we believe that it's safe to say that it is not how we view water and what we know about water, but instead it's how water views us and what it knows about us, right? So. Um, that's the, what all the technology is based around are some basic fundamentals, which I think you'll probably hear a lot of today. Mm -hmm. And we're just the ones applying them and using them at scale today. So wow. maybe we want to jump into how we're actually doing that, John Paul. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and share my screen real quick. We've got a little presentation we threw together for you guys today. Just to help you understand this a little bit better. Um, 
uh, you know, pictures are always worth a thousand words, they say. So can you all see my screen okay? Yeah. Beautiful. Um, so thank you to Beth and thank you to Unify for this opportunity to share what we're doing. Um, and we'll just kind of go through what we did last year. So Uptair has only been around, around for about a year. And we were fortunate to have clients before we even had an LLC uh, or a product in hand. And we were able to deploy things very quickly. So what you're looking at here is uh, an image which we took via drone of one of our almond partners in the Central Valley of California, specifically in Carruthers, where they are effectively farming almonds hydroponically. Um, the trees are in the, the dirt, um, but that dirt is mostly sand. All of the biological and organic matter and the humus, all the decomposing things and the microbes and all the other um, components of the soil food web have been largely eliminated over the last hundred years of petrochemical monocrop farming practices. Wow. Um, yeah, it's not a fun place to be. Um, and you know, you go down there and you see that people are sick, you know, the I know. Uh, highest uh, incidence of cancer, neurodegenerative disease, low sperm counts, et cetera. Yeah, yeah. from all the pesticides being dumped into the water there. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. it's a tragedy. And that water, yeah. as we know, we live on one system, right? Our planet Earth is our spaceship. There's only yeah. one of them. Our water systems are all connected. So those pesticides are going everywhere. They're getting into everything. Right. And so that is one of our primary missions at Uptera is to reduce and eventually eliminate the use of those chemicals that we know are destructive to human biology as well as all life. Um, Absolutely. So, <laughs> You're yeah. here. So we deployed three technologies last year. Our Terra Flow water structuring systems, our Terra Scribe, frequency imprinting technology and our Terra Cell quantum field conditioning service. I don't know how much detail we're going to get into each of those, but we're going to talk about the results we had on the farms. Yeah. Yeah, so, you guys have had some extraordinary results. So, so what what are we looking at here? Some aerial drone yes. photography? I mean, what what is the technology here that they use to assess the plants? Exactly. So I'm going to go ahead and give a shout out to the service provider that we use for this imagery called VineView. They're amazing. So this was done with multispectral cameras that take photos in specific narrow bandwidths of the visible and invisible light spectrums. And then they use custom uh, proprietary algorithms to analyze those photos and come up with what you're seeing here. Um, and those photos were taken from uh, a fixed wing aircraft, actually, and not a drone. Because mm. um, they can cover a lot more ground on a flight. It's much more economical than drone flights for large scale uh, analysis. And this farm partner farms over 10,000 acres in the Central Valley. They're one of the largest privately held almond growers in California. Mm. Um, and so what, it, what we're seeing here would be water, water content in, so give us, give us, tell us what we're looking at here. So we got the control and the treatment group below. Yep. And, yeah. Tell us what we are. So seeing. this is one plot. I think this plot was right around 70 acres that we split the irrigation down the center. So we had all of our technologies, the infield technologies and the remote technologies operating on the treatment side of the south half of the field and the, the bottom half there on the image. And uh, the control is just everything normal. So on the south half, we reduced water by 30%, we reduced fertilizer by 30%, and we reduced pesticides by 30%. Wow. Um, and just to put that into context, they spend roughly $600 per acre on amendments, that's fertilizers and pesticides. And almonds require about 1.2 million gallons of water per year, uh, per acre per year. Um, that stat of it taking one gallon per almond is an accurate statistic based on our study. It's just absolutely mind blowing. Wow. And what these photos show is that we were actually able to increase canopy moisture content and increase plant vigor. So more growth, more health and vibrancy in the leaves with a 30% reduction. Um, our client was absolutely stunned. They actually were trying to find reasons that Aside from our technology that we had the results that we did, we did, we did so well. Um, it was <laughs> That's incredible. So wow. And just so then how many gallons of water did you save? If you like 30% reduction, how many gallons did that translate into? Yeah. So across the treatment acreage of 111 acres, 
we saved over 35 million gallons of water. Wow. And that to put that so in the large. Important. Yes. So important. It was amazing. And, and, you know, and then I, so sorry to interrupt you, but I think I think that you feel confident that that you, with your technology, you could have reduced the soil amendments further. You could have reduced the pest, pesticides. You could have eliminated them potentially. So, like, what's so beautiful and why I wanted you to to be on this this broadcast today is that you are doing such important things for the earth here. You're saving water and you're protecting water. And I think that if we if we let you kind of take it to its full potential here, you know, we could do away with these chemical amendments and these pesticides and, and really, you know, be sparing with our water use. It's incredible what you're doing. Yes, Show us yes. more. Show us more. What, and what, is, what do these Thank technologies you. look like? Do we get to see pictures of what they look like in the field? We do. Those are coming up. I'm going to we'll see those. Let me just talk about what we did in potatoes and okay. then we'll, we'll show you what they look like in field. Okay. So um, when we finished up our almond grow in Carruthers, we, um, we put some technology on a large potato field in southeastern Idaho. Um, and this was a really special study because we actually didn't even get our technology into the field until about halfway through the grow season. Wow. So, which was af after what's referred to as the cell elongation phase. So potatoes are a really interesting crop. Most of them are genetically modified, if not almost all of them. Um, and so the seed comes to the farmer from the seed bank, those get put in the ground. And between the time of planting, which is around late April to early June, the cells are replicating, right? The cells are dividing and that's how the growth is happening. But after June, the cells stop dividing and the cells themselves just start elongating. And so our technology didn't get into the field until after the cell division phase. We actually think we could have blown these results out of the water even further had we been on the field prior to even the first water going down, which is what we're doing this year in the expanded trials. But even just in those two and a half months, we were able to increase yields by 20% and increase the rate of growth during the last two weeks of the season, which is when they want to see the most growth happen um, by 25%. Uh, and this was with equivalent water and equivalent fertilizer and pesticides. They were much less risk tolerant than the California farmers, um, but they even noticed at the end of the trial that their field was much wetter than they had wanted it to be. So they actually could have reduced moisture levels as well. Mm -hmm. um, so we were really excited about those results. Wow. Um, and this is, a, this is a great visual just to show you. The control field is the image on the left. So you can see this is after they've already... So potatoes are an interesting crop too. They actually spray a chemical desiccant uh, on the leaves to give, make the leaves, the vines dead, dry, um, dry out and die before yeah. they harvest. And so you can, is it just easier to harvest then? Like is it, it makes it easier, yes. Uh -huh. um, but is obviously not great for the rest of the biology in that region. Totally, yeah. Um, and so you can see there in the image on the left, those vines are, are dying and dried out. That's what they're supposed to look like at that time based on the moisture levels and the last watering. But you can see on the right how much more vibrant and moist those vines and dark green those vines are because of the fact that they didn't reduce water like we had instructed them to. Um, so that was really amazing to see as well, just how well that structured water um, was being retained, as well as all the information that we imprinted into the field was being retained in those leaves. Right. And, and I and think, most, and sorry, and most importantly, just the increase in the immune response, right, of the plants altogether. So that's a big thing that we see is just this immediate ability for the plants to hydrate themselves and have information sharing um, that allows for such a stronger immune response naturally. Right? Wow. So, right, and now, and just to like bridge that gap, right? So now what does that translate to, to all of the humans that are eating those potatoes? Mm -hmm. right? Yeah, because <laughs> our immune system responds to the terpenes and the different like immune molecules in the plants that we're eat that the plants need. And then when we eat them, it affects our immune system beneficially yeah. or not. Um, so, so one of the other things that you had told me before that I thought was so interesting was that in addition, you, you ended up having these higher quality potatoes, the, the yeah. number ones. Talk about, talk about how potatoes are rated and how your water treatment influenced what, what they found. Reza, do you want that one? You want me to take that one? 
Go ahead, Reza. Tackle that. So potatoes are interesting. I was really excited about this trial because if you if you guys remember in high school, we used to make a little battery out of potatoes, right? And so yeah. this technology, I, I just had no doubt that we were gonna really kick butt on this one, right? So, but potatoes rate things in this numerical kind of system where number ones means that they're eight to 12 ounces in size, right? And they look beautiful. They have no blemishes or anything. And so, and they want this to happen at the last two weeks of the growth cycle. And like John Paul mentioned, we got in late and uh, it was getting close to that time and the farm was checking. They go around and do sample digs and they were going, oh no, the, your treatment side, it's not working. They're all small, they're four ounces, but they are equally all around four ounces, right? And so the other technology kicked in with TerraCell and the various conditioning we were doing. And in the last two weeks, lo and behold, they all grew to these beautiful number one rating kind of potatoes. And it was just really wonderful to see it. They had mentioned something like they hadn't had records like that for a hundred years or something. Is that correct? <laughs> wow. <laughs> something like, yeah, yeah, something it's, like it's just that. really like if you give any biological system the appropriate water, it, it can reach its full potential. You know, it's so vital for information exchange. It's so vital for the physiology of the plant and for the physiology of humans. So yeah. water is just really where it's at. So give, um, yeah, tell us more. So, I mean, it is important to note that water is just so impressionable. You know, yeah. in the lab, I, I'm sure some, most of you are familiar now with like Dr. Emoto's work and messages in water and mm -hmm. all the great people you're probably going to hear from today, all the work they've done that we stand on their shoulders. One thing is that water definitely stores a lot of information, right? And one metric that we don't really get to measure a lot is the happiness of the plants or the energetic quality that the water is delivering that allows for them to thrive, right? Yeah. And so, you know, that's one major benefit of this technology is we kind of are, uh, I, for lack of a better kind of <laughs> analogy, we're DJing the farm, right? We're, <laughs> we're able to kind of play music and resonant frequencies that have, you know, coherent meaning that can then essentially that, that energy can be discharged uh, and it's readily available and taken up by bi biological entities. Oh my God, I love that. So here's, here's um, some of the technology out there. Um, these are the water structuring devices. On the bottom there, you have a large kind of uh, uh, tank, which has these fractals inside of it, these geometries, these nestled geometries that create different velocities at each rung as the water goes through. And it creates this thing called a Venturi effect, where you'll have areas of different kinds of pressure and velocity, but uh, to make it simple, out the center of this comes a very coherent vortex. <laughs> and uh, the water structures itself in these hexagonal alignments like a honeycomb, and it starts stacking vertically and folding into what we think is an infinite amount of arrangements. But it's more important that it becomes like this liquid crystal, which you'll probably hear from a lot of people today as well about that. And then it comes up into this secondary piece of technology, which we call the Terra Scribe. And on this device, you have a passive imprinting kind of going on with uh, various kind of pure elements that are inside these chambers. And the water has to go through, again, a huge amount of surface area and a very short distance, right? So it, it implodes on itself and folds on itself. And this just allows for the structure to even get more refined. And there's a harmonic quality that is being imprinted here and the charge is a little different. And so then it comes up and out and goes through what in Idaho they use big pivots. Mm -hmm. And so because of the nature of the charge of this water, we're learning new things all the time. On the pivot kind of system, it even causes nitrogen fixation out of the, out of the air. So it's another big boost. Wow where you know the potatoes and all the plants just thrive it's amazing so cool okay I, I just want to make a little note here though is that structuring water or 
you know, doing things energetically with water is not new. It goes back to ancient times, right? Um, but at the scale that we're doing it and uh, at the efficiency and the ease that these devices are able to do that, it's, it's really a profound solution um, for the first time. And we're really excited about it. Oh my um, gosh. And you are also, so these are obviously for large scale outdoor agricultural grows. You're making smaller devices for the greenhouse farmer and for potentially for in-home use, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Perfect. Why don't we, uh, I think we have another slide. Let's actually get, because of that, that picture means a thousand words. Let's look at what this water actually does for like amendments, which is another huge thing, right? So um, apart from even the frequency technology, just putting water and any kind of minerals or amendments through, on the left, you see like tap water that's been unstructured and you can see the amendments and kind of the structure that it's at. Um, when it goes through what you just witnessed, you know, the tank and the inline, on the right, you can see the coherence and the level of structure that all of a sudden the mineral or the amendment has. And mm. we're also looking at this at 100x on this side um, because it's so refined that, that at 40x, it just looks like a very, very faint sheet. And you have to get really close to kind of see the structure. Mm. And this just this is just also one of the benefits of this because it makes all of those minerals and things much more bioavailable. Wow. Yeah. That's, that's beautiful. Okay. Yeah. Well, I'm just so impressed with what you guys are doing. And I also would like to just say to everyone watching, you've got, you know, just this solid company and really good business people in, in a part of it that, you know, have good business development relationships around the world. So this is going to spread like wildfire. I know you're in conversations with, with a lot of big farmers and with a greenhouse company and all of that. And you guys are doing amazing work. So thank, thank you. Goodness. Keep it up. We should thank come, you. we'll come and, and come to your lab and see what you're doing there. Yeah. And so everyone stay tuned. We'll, we'll show you where it's at. Definitely. Happy International Water Day, guys. <laughs> Thank you. Bye, everybody. Thank Take you. care. <clears throat>